Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Vlogmas day nine. It's the morning here, it's around nine or so, and it's Saturday today. So I start teaching at about 11. Um, I have one student absent today, so it's gonna be a bit of a patchy teaching day. So yeah, a little bit of extra time in between students, maybe to get other work done. Um, this morning I've had a, I don't like the word lazier start to the morning because that sounds negative. C calmer, slower, I don't know, start to the morning. I didn't feel like going to my computer this morning basically. So instead I sat in one of our rocking chairs doing, um, catching up on th little bits of work but from the iPad instead. So yeah, that was this morning. And I did a lot of thinking this morning, <laughs> which is sometimes what my job is. So there was a lot of just me staring at the Christmas tree, but I promise things are actually going on in the head. Um, and I was planning some games. So I have a few new ideas for games, two sort of brand new ones, and I was thinking through some others. Um, yeah, and I think I'm gonna get started on them today while the inspiration's hot. So that's what I'm gonna do in between my teaching today, I think. Uh, started on some of the artwork for the games. When I'm being efficient, the way the games process works is I create the artwork, I export it from Adobe Illustrator. My husband sets it up in InDesign, does the initial setup. And then, because it's just, there's, yeah, it's very easy for him to do that part. And then I go back in and write the directions and add other pieces that we need. It's not all created in Illustrator. So it should sort of happen in three stages, which sounds less efficient, but is actually more time efficient over the long term. So yeah, I'll probably start on the artwork. Sometimes I'm tempted to just take it straight away to InDesign and not let him do his job. <laughs> but I'll try not to do that. Um, and one of his jobs, that's not his only job. So yeah, the other thing I did this morning was a big bathroom clear out. So exciting, right? But the downstairs bathroom where the students wash their hands before um, lessons, I've been wanting to, and not meaning to, wanting to genuinely clear that out for so long. Cause there's just like old products there that I know are expired or low quality and are never gonna get used or whatever. And you know, you sort of store these things and then you, minimize it a bit and you're like yeah but I'll keep the slightly better ones or whatever or the unopened ones I don't know these things are all from so long ago I threw away a ton of them this morning because I was like there's no way I took out a couple that are just no good for me because you know sometimes you have to try these things out before knowing that it's not right for you for instance dry shampoo is just not something that's useful in my life but one of my friends loves to use it, who has completely different hair to me, <laughs> loves to use it. So I saved that in case she wants it. But otherwise, threw out a lot of bathroom stuff. Went through all the medicines and like, not prescription medicines, you know, first aid type stuff and got rid of the expired stuff there too and split it up and organized it. And yeah, there's a lot more empty space in the bathroom now, which feels better. And also just did a big clean of all the shelves and the surfaces and everything that doesn't always get cleaned on the daily cleans, you know, like the hidden shelves, like there's this nook up high, that kind of stuff. Anyway, so that was thrilling to hear about. <laughs> Sorry about that, but it's satisfying. Part of the reason I, I told you about it though was because I keep meaning to mention, so when I did the tour, I didn't show you um, the bathroom because it's not very exciting, but there's one minorly exciting um, element in the bathroom and that is the towels, bear with me. So I think I've mentioned this elsewhere, but basically when I started having all students wash their hands, when we came back after the pandemic and I kept that because I was like, well, that really is just good hygiene. They should wash their hands when they arrive here and touch a piano that everyone else is gonna touch. And you know, it's just better, especially with little kids. So they all wash their hands. And when we started that, I was like, I don't want to use a thousand paper towels. Like I'm so uncomfortable with that. I don't want to have them all use the same hand towel because that doesn't seem hygienic. <laughs> the whole point was hygiene. So what I did was I got loads of microfiber cloths. Um, I think they're 
call yeah I think other people might call them something differently but like the yeah the really absorbent cloths and I use them as individual hand towels so we have a basket of them and then underneath on the floor there's a little basket where they put them when they're used so they take one they dry their hands and they put it in the basket underneath and then we wash them each week it's simple but maybe if you have a similar situation you might like to use that system too the thing that i did more recently was take a whole bunch of them the bigger ones they're not big they're like this if that gives you any indication based on the size of my face um i cut them in half because you don't need a big microfiber cloth to dry your hands they dry you know they're very absorbent so i cut them in half and i overlocked the edges but if you don't sew obviously you don't have that option um but yeah simple system but it works really well for us so rest of this morning i'm gonna get on with some of those games and then i'll probably come back on to chat to you i'm thinking in the afternoon when i've hopefully finished with some work and I'm doing some sewing projects. So yeah, see you later today. afternoon now it's almost four so I'm done teaching for the day and yeah I've been getting on with a little bit of sewing related stuff so I've been piecing together a pattern basically um, if you buy PDF patterns these days <laughs> you get an A4 version um, or like a print at home version or you, or you can have large format printed at a, at a big printer but I usually just print it at home and tape the pieces of paper together which sounds kind of annoying but I really don't mind it as a job I don't mind working with paper and trimming things down and etc so I normally do it that way it saves money obviously versus paying for printing and I normally have paper with like an error printed on the back or whatever that I think I can recycle so that's what I normally do and that's what I was doing today. So the pattern I was printing out is for one of my Christmas gifts. So it's for um, my husband and I'm, he watched a little bit of one vlogmas video but he's not following along which is fair enough it's about his daily life too kind of thing so it'll be a bit weird for him to watch like yeah here's what happened today in your life. Anyway so yeah I think we're safe enough to share it here. So I'm making a shirt for him. The pattern is like a, a tropical shirt it's like a you know, open collar, Hawaiian style, whatever you want to call it, um, shirt. And the fabric is the star of the show. It's not really about the shirt shape. That's just sort of a standard shirt. It's this. Can you see? It's friends fabric. I found this recently. It was at our local haberdashery store that I go to, that you've seen me go to earlier in Vlogmas. And um, I was there. This is... That store is so funny because I go and she's sometimes the, the woman behind the counter will just be like, oh, we have a sale. All these things are 50% off today only. I'm like, okay. But I didn't know before I came here. So it's not the greatest marketing strategy, but I appreciate the discount. <laughs> but I would have bought it anyway. So it's kind of interesting. Anyway, um, she said that this time and she said, oh, and the sale is upstairs too. And I was like, upstairs. So there's a whole fabric shop above this haberdashery shop that I didn't know was there. The, they're in this um, kind of industrial estate area. It's part of 
an industrial estate area called Fashion City. So it's all like, yeah, like clothing, wholesalers and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, you have to walk up, I think it's three flights of stairs and you get to a fabric shop, which is actually pretty big. Not a lot of it is fabric in the style, like there's a lot of polyester. So I'm saying I'll just say it the way, which I don't buy. But um, yeah, they had this friends fabric and my husband loves friends. It's like a comfort blanket. I mean, I, I loved it too, right? I think he loves it even more than me though. It's like this like comforting show. Yes, I know parts of it are problematic. It's from the 90s, like things were pretty different on TV then. But yeah, we're fans. So, <laughs> so this has like the turkey with the sunglasses on it and the two um, lazy boy chairs and the fountain from Central Park and a lobster. That's my favorite part, the lobster. If you know, you know. Um, okay, I won't talk more about the fabric, but I'm excited to make that up and give it to him as a surprise on Christmas because I think he's really going to like it. We're taking a risk because obviously I haven't sewn this pattern before for him. So there's a chance that it won't fit well. I think it'll fit fine. I think it'll be fine. <laughs> it doesn't need to fit like super fitted in that style of shirt. So I think we'll get away with it. And then other gifts I need to get on with are a gift for my one of my best friends uh, who I'm making. I have half her gift, but I'm making her, planning to make her a bag. It's like um, a bag that you would keep as a spare like shopping bag or whatever keep it in your inside your other bags or around the house whatever so it comes in a little zippered pouch and then inside is the bag so you can store it nicely and the thing that I like about the design is it can easily convert from a tote bag like a bag you would hold to a backpack so the straps kind of work both ways which I think is cool so that's my plan for her and the plan is it's getting late in the game guys but I think if I can I can fit it in hopefully um the plan is to embroider the front of the pouch so I think I'm going to leave the black bag plain but embroider the front of the pouch with a goat because she's the friend that I went to a goat farm with last summer and I just think she'd get a kick out of it like a sort of floppy-eared outline of a goat. It's fine that if, that, if you'd be like, if you received that, I think she'll love it. <laughs> and then I need to think of something for a third gift. I have an idea for it. So in my family, um, like my immediate family, basically we're all adults. So only one of my four brothers has kids and even those two Two of those three kids are adults, but they're not here this year. They live in Norway, so they're not going to be here this year. So it's just adults. Um, and since it's generally just adults, we always just do a Chris Kindle between us. It just, we just quite a few years ago now decided we want to have some kind of gift giving element to Christmas, but getting a little thing for each person, you know, it ends up being something not great. So we decided, no, we'll just make it a slightly higher budget. I mean, still not much. By most family standards, we're pretty modest in our gift giving. But um, yeah, slightly higher budget and we do a Chris Kindle. And I'm always the one that sets that up. So I was late doing it, as I think I always am. Anyway, uh, I set it up and I've drawn my mom's name. So I need to get a gift for her. So, um, yeah, I haven't got the an idea for the... I'd like to buy some element, something nice, to go in this idea I have for the made element, which is bowl cozies. Have you ever seen these? So I've, been one, I've seen them since, I think, last Christmas or the Christmas before. I saw some sewing vloggers, like, making them. And I just think they're a lovely gift. So the idea is that they're, like, um, a little... <laughs> Can they look like a bowl themselves. They look like a fabric bowl. And then you put a bowl in it when you put things in the microwave to heat them up. So like say you're heating up soup or dinner from last night for your lunch or whatever. You put it in that and you put that in the microwave. And then when you take it out, you're not going to burn your hands. And also if you want to eat like on your lap, but sitting watching TV or whatever, it's not burning your lap. 
So I just think it's a nice gift and she's recently redone her kitchen, which is awesome because she so deserves it. Um, and she, uh, her microwave is now up higher. It used to be on the counter. Now it's like in an upper cabinet and that's the way ours is in an upper cabinet. And I do find it more cumbersome to take things out like with a tea towel or with a oven glove or whatever from a microwave. So the bowl gets really hot and you're taking it out, but it's also up high and that's a bit awkward. And yeah, I just thought it'd be nice. So that's the plan, bowl cozies. If you have a genius idea for what I should put in the bowl cozies, aside from bowls, because she has all the crockery she'll ever need. I don't want to give her any clutter for her beautiful new organized kitchen because I know she doesn't need it and it would just be like extra stuff that she doesn't want. But yeah, if I could think of something. Or if I could, um, mm, that's an idea. So one thing in the new kitchen, she can't have the clock where she used to have it on the wall because it was above the cabinets, but now the cabinets are higher. So um, I'll have to, so I'm going around to my mom's tonight and I'll have to have a little look and see if she's already replaced that clock. I know she had a temporary solution that she didn't like very much. So I'll have to have a look, but she may have already got another one. Cause I know she was scouring uh, charity shops for them to try and get one second hand. That could be an option. Cause it would sit in the Volvo cozies, even though it's irrelevant to it, it's both for the kitchen. Anyway, that's my thoughts on presents. So I need to, I want to get on with cutting out my husband's shirt now. I've got the pattern cut out, so now I need to cut it out in the fabric. And hopefully I can get that done and then I'll probably be done for the day in here. Um, and go and, yeah, have something to eat and go around to my mum's to watch Strictly Come Dancing. As I mentioned last week, I do every week. Next week is the last show, so um, it's a semi-final tonight. But yeah, I wanted to catch you up on teaching because here's what happened today. I had one student cancel in advance, fair enough, knew about that. I had one no-show, so I had my first student of the day, I waited around for my second student, they didn't show up, I had a hunch, when, when it was like a few minutes in I was like, they're not going to show up, because they're always on time. But I did other work, I, I worked on the artwork for games that I mentioned, and yeah, and then I had the gap because of not having the student who had told me they weren't going to be there for a good reason to be fair it was for a violin exam so it was for another musical reason and um yeah so I used anyway used that time for more work and then my last student of the day so I have four I'm supposed to have four today it was wasn't showing up it was 15 minutes in, into their lesson so I got up and I turned off my screen and my computer and I was just standing up to go downstairs and go out here and do a bit of sewing, like, be like well, I'm done, that's it. <laughs> well, I had one bit of work to do here and then sewing. And saw their car pull up. So over 15 minutes late, which is really late. They have half an hour with me and then 35 minutes for their buddy lesson. But still, that's that's like a quarter, even if you count it as a full lesson, that's a quarter of a lesson. And they showed up to the door and Dad was just like, oh, sorry, we're a bit late. And I couldn't help myself. I'm going to be honest with you. I couldn't help myself. I said, quite late. <laughs> because, like, a bit? That's an understatement. Come on. Um, and I had been about to give up, which means, like, the door wouldn't have been answered. The other teacher working would have eventually answered it and maybe gone and found me. But that would have been super awkward. Without any kind of text, that's really late. Anyway, we did a bit. We got in what we could. Um, student told me, because student is very young, that the reason they were late is because he could not stop playing Nintendo. So you gotta love the honesty of kids. Obviously I didn't exclaim or in any way chide him for that. I just said, oh right, because that's not his fault. <laughs> That's parents' fault. But anyway, that was interesting as my last lesson of the day. So yeah, I'm gonna wrap up this video. I'm gonna do a bit of cutting out of some fabric and then go round to 
my parents' house for Strictly Come Dancing tonight. And I wanted to let you know that I'm not going to be on tomorrow. So I'm going to skip day 10 of Vlogmas and I'll come on for day 11. That's because it's actually my birthday tomorrow. And it's not that I don't want to talk to you all on my birthday. It's that, honestly, for me, I like a quiet kind of celebration, right? Like, we'll be going out to dinner and doing nice things, but that's it. I don't actually like to be the center of attention. And doing a video about my birthday just feels too center of attention for me. So that's my honest reason why I'm not going to do it. But I might take a bit of footage and put it as the intro to day 11. So, um, yeah, I'll see you on Monday for day 11. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas 